Whitetail antlers are some of the fastest growing bones on the planet. In certain times of the year, they can grow up to two inches in a single day. It truly is remarkable what they can do in a really short growing season. So in this video, we're going to use my art to illustrate what that looks like month by month. So it all starts with the pedicle. The pedicle on a whitetail buck actually begins forming in the fetus before the buck is even born. And the size and shape of the pedicle will have a direct influence on the size and shape of the antler that it produces. Additionally, a severe injury to the pedicle early in the growing season can have long-term impacts on the deer, causing non-typical traits or even potential deformities in that antler for the rest of a buck's life. But what's really important is the photo period. Changes in the photo period throughout the year trigger changes in the buck's hormones, particularly testosterone. And changes in these testosterone levels are what trigger all of the major developments of a buck's antler growth all the way through the year, from the starting of antlers to the shedding of velvet all the way through till he loses his antlers in late winter. So here's what this looks like month to month. In March, an increasing photo period triggers the hormones that jumpstart new antler growth. In April, antlers begin to grow. These antlers grow from their tips rather than the base and start as cartilage, then calcify into bone. In May, bucks consume new vegetation with spring green up and gives them a much needed protein boost for growing antlers. In June, points will begin to branch off of the main beam, appearing as large, dark, bulbous forms at the tips. July is when the most dramatic antler growth occurs, as his testosterone begins the steady climb that will carry him all the way through the rut. By mid-August, a buck's rack will be fully formed underneath his velvet. During this time, a buck actually experiences seasonal osteoporosis, pulling minerals from the skeleton and devoting them to hardening antlers. In September, a buck will rub off his velvet on trees and make a bloody mess, revealing hard antler in a matter of hours. During October, a buck will lay down rub lines, his forehead gland leaving scent on the exposed cambium layer. This scent contains information about his identity heading into the rut. Antlers really earn their keep during November. Bucks use them for fighting off rivals for highly contested breeding rights. By December, roughly half of all bucks will have broken off one or more points, with the most common being a brow tine or a G3. During the harsh winter weather of January, an injury or other severe stress can sometimes cause a buck to drop his antlers early. By late February, a significant drop in testosterone will cause the antler to finally separate from the skull and shed. Any bucks that don't shed in February will do so in March. Antlers also come in a variety of color, and research has shown that the amount of oxidized blood on a buck's antlers at the time of velvet shed in September has a lot to do with that color, as well as the type and volume of trees that they rub. Older deer that rub certain types of trees and rub a lot, like this one here, tend to have a darker rack. Hardened antlers contain 11 different important minerals, mainly calcium and phosphorus. As soon as they're shed, squirrels and other rodents are likely going to start chewing on them for these valuable minerals, which is also why shed hunters hit the woods really hard in March to try to find these sheds before they've been chewed up. Usually, though, if a shed's left behind, it'll be consumed for these minerals and the whole cycle starts over again. I hope this video gives you a new appreciation for whitetail antlers and how fascinating they really are. And be sure to check out ryankirby.com to see all of my paper prints and more featuring facts and figures about the whitetail buck.